Well, let's bring in former Assistant Treasury Secretary Monica Crowley. Monica, good to see you. Great to see you. It's interesting, these EV proponents try to do these long distance trips, whether it was the Ford CEO or Jennifer Granholm, and they don't seem to go as planned because the infrastructure is not there. Well, yeah, we just heard what happened to the Energy Secretary, and it sounds like a scene out of Veep, right? <laughs> and it's easy to kind of laugh at this, that the vehicles aren't quite where they need to be to, to go on a long, uh, long haul trip, and we don't have enough charging stations. The infrastructure just isn't there. But as we were saying uh, before we came to air, of course they're going to leverage this. They're not embarrassed by this at all. They wanted this to be reported so that they can then go back to Congress and say, we need more money. We got to have, you know, billions of dollars more in investment in terms of creating the kind of infrastructure to support this green, green energy uh, EVs and, and the rest of the infrastructure. Seven and a half billion dollars in the infrastructure bill for half a million charging stations. They think that there is, this is the highway system like President Eisenhower, but there's no benefit to the American people of any of this. It, it is cost with zero benefit. What's the benefit? Oh, we're gonna n make sure the temperature on the earth doesn't rise like one degree Celsius, mm -hmm. there's no benefit. Save the planet. It's just cost. Right. To, but to this point, President Biden's war on oil is costing Americans big time, literally billions and billions of dollars in a tax hikes. According to Steve Moore and Casey Mulligan from the Committee to Unleash Prosperity, if the U.S. would have stuck with President Trump's policies, we would have produced roughly three and a half million more barrels of oil than we have now. And because of that, America has lost up to almost $400 billion in oil production values, spiking costs at gas stations across the country for Americans. I, I, this is mm -hmm. purposeful. Yes. Yes, this is the deliberate destruction or attempted destruction of American domestic energy production to try to go down this path of the Green New Deal. But everybody has to understand energy is just sort of the top line superficial reason for why they're doing this. They really don't care about the environment. They don't care necessarily about fossil fuels. It's because energy is the biggest sector available to them as a lever to affect the fundamental transformation of the U.S. economy and American society overall. This is why they've waged war on domestic energy production. This is why they have deliberately uh, ratcheted up the price of gas. Long Island, New York, I just filled up my tank, $4.50 mm. per gallon. Um, you, you know, people cannot afford this. They're being squeezed. But again, this is all intentional because they want to channel everybody into these electric vehicles. Then again, where does electricity come from? It comes from coal and other quote unquote dirty sources of of uh, of energy or to, but to your point they don't care about the environment they're building windmills out in the ocean and it's killing whales and yep. all kinds of sea life if they cared about that they'd go let's put these windmills somewhere else or find some other new form of energy they don't care about the environment it's That's about right. control let's get to this in I, I said three and a half million it billion. was three and a half billion I read it wrong. I don't want to correct Go you. Ahead. It was close. No, All you right. can correct me. You a new poll says voters feel slightly better about the state of the economy, but they aren't thanking President Biden just yet. The Wall Street Journal finding nearly 60% of Americans still disapprove of Biden's handling of the economy. But of course, if you ask the White House, that's not their fault. To the question about how American people actually feel, are they wrong? Do you believe the data is what they're misunderstanding? Where's the disconnect? No, I think what's, what we're seeing is that the American people are still recovering from COVID, still recovering from what has been a historically tough time in terms of a pandemic that cost um, lives and also set us back. Monica, that, that COVID pony is just about dead. It's their policy. It's <laughs> yeah. not COVID. We're yeah. two years beyond. There is spin, and then there's just straight-up <laughs> BS, which is what you got from, from this White House representative. I mean, I, look, the American people know what's going on here. They've been experiencing raging inflation, sky-high prices, sky-high gas prices. Now we've got record consumer debt. All of this is a direct result of Joe Biden and the Democrats having a lock on Congress, passing trillions of dollars in spending that the United States could not afford and that we did not need. It's inflation. You caused it. And then you, they keep looking at the American people and saying, no, 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 no. 
It's not us. It's not happening. It's COVID. Nobody is buying it. I need it. some that, Advil. That's why. <laughs> That's, That's why the poll after poll shows you've got two out of three Americans who, ha who totally disapprove of Biden's handling of the economy. You have two out of three Americans Sorry. living paycheck to paycheck. And you have three quarters of the American people who have a negative view of this economy. They know what's up. Next year's election is going to have real political consequences as well as economic ones because mm -hmm. people are holding Joe Biden and the Democrats accountable. For retribution a year from now. Monica yes. Crowley, I was a pleasure.